something that's very special about art, it's very subjective. It leaves itself wide open to the interpreter, to the viewer who interprets the work. What I say about my work may be something totally different than what the viewer sees in it and what the viewer takes out of it. Early on, I guess mainly my influences were my grandmother, my aunts, my mother. They all were very artistic. They crocheted, knitted, did all kinds of stuff with their hands. So I actually went to a community college in Dallas and uh, I started learning more and more about the, the aspects of fine art. I did, really didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew that I wanted to do art, but I didn't know you could make a living at that time. You know, it was back in the 50s, 60s. And so one thing led to the other. I started having to teach art in order to make a living. So I'm very fortunate that I'm, I'm able to work with young folks and I learn from them as much as they learn from me. And that's how I started getting into printmaking because I met kids that were uh, doing t-shirts and before you know it they were helping me build equipment and then helping me do prints. Well, Quince was a, sort of an experimental piece. The idea behind that bull was the struggle that the bull has, you know, in the, in the arena. We all know who's going to be the winner in those, in, in those terms, but every now and then the bull comes up the winner. And so I think that sort of uh, reminds me of the struggles that artists have, that I've had, and how uh, life can seem to give you some, some hard knocks, but eventually some of those knocks come your way. It's taken a long time for this idea of the, uh, the Latino, the Mexican-American, the, even the Chicano to be accepted within the mainstream of art, but I think you're seeing a lot of that happening now. It's a good thing that we're, we're starting to be recognized, not just as folk artists, but as fine artists as well.